go inside the Crimson Tide. Tighter Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Carrie Harris. Buckle your seatbelt. Remember that. Buckle your seatbelt. We're going somewhere. We're going to recreate the atmosphere in Coleman Coliseum. The fans are going to be more involved than they've ever been. Ever since he stepped off the plane, Alabama's new head basketball coach Avery Johnson has been impressive with big statements about changing the culture of Alabama basketball. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock alongside Rodney Orr. I'm Jen Chapman and for Gary Harris. And I think we have to start by opening up our cans. Still some of Gary's thunder. Oh, oh, yeah, that's true. But Gary can do it better than I do. Here we go. All right, Whew, we're ready to go now. And naturally, after a whirlwind week for the new head men's coach here in Tuscaloosa, that's what we'll lead off with tonight. Avery Johnson officially introduced on Wednesday. And as they say, he won the press conference. Impressive all around his talk about the standard being Duke and the goals being final fours and titles. Avery Johnson also outlined why he's confident despite having never coached in the college game. He says he has a plan on how he'll recruit in the next generation of Bama basketball players. When Coach Avery Johnson walks into a recruit's living room, they recognize Coach Avery Johnson on some level, whether it's the kid, the AAU coach, the high school coach, or the parent. Somebody recognizes Coach Avery and his New Orleans accent from TV. Somebody recognizes Coach Avery from being coach of the year on the highest level in the NBA. Somebody recognizes Coach Avery from coaching in the NBA Finals in 2006. And if you want to make it to the next level as an NBA player, I'm your guy. All right, Rodney, a strong start, and I already see you smiling. For Avery Johnson, let's talk about it. For him to actually walk the walk now, what mm -hmm. has he got to do? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think certainly the first thing he has to do is he has to put together some recruiting classes, and, and I think it's going to take time. I do think it's, you know, everyone needs to be patient because, you know, he's got to rehaul this uh, or overhaul this uh, roster of his and get the players that can fit his system but I think he's going to do a tremendous job doing that I think when you look at his personality some people were concerned with how would he recruit well there you see it there I think if you can't if you're not sold by you know his approach and his program his philosophy then uh, you know I, I just think it's almost impossible to be sold because he has got the personality Jen that you look for I mean he can really relate to young kids he's been in the NBA he certainly has a background for, of success in the NBA knows what it takes to get there and all of these kids let's be honest you know that's where they want to go and and he can certainly help them get there and so he kind of even brought up it doesn't matter that he didn't coach college basketball yet because that no. is the ultimate goal for a lot of these kids. Yeah, I, I don't think it has anything to do with it, to be honest with you. He's an outstanding coach. He knows how to coach basketball. And I think when he, he relates extremely well to kids and he can certainly tell them, you know, I've been there. I know what it's like as a player. I know what it's like as a coach. I know how to develop you. And he's got a track record for doing that. So it's an easy sell. Well, you can't go very far in Tuscaloosa without reminders of Alabama's football program. Avery Johnson didn't shy away from that aspect of his new gig. In fact, Johnson visited Alabama football practice the afternoon he was hired, and he spoke with the team at the request of Nick Saban. Johnson said he isn't intimidated by the program Saban has built, but instead he wants to use it to better the Hoops product. Nick Saban also had great things to say about the new coach. You know, first of all, uh, Avery Johnson's a part of our family here now, and uh, we want to do everything we can to help him be successful. We have a tremendous amount of respect for what he's been able to accomplish and what he's been able to do. Uh, and, you know, we've always been a real team player here in terms of the relationships that we try to have with the other sports because, you know, we want to be good in everything here. And uh, we want to help Avery every way that we can. Uh, I thought it was, you know, the players have a lot of respect for someone who's played in the NBA and coached in the NBA. And, you know, I told him that, you know, he's going to be on my noontime basketball league, but I'm going to play the point and he's going to have to play two guard. All right? And he's not going to control that because I'm the commissioner of the league. 
Okay, that is good right there. Well, we'll have more with Johnson in just a bit, but Alabama's football team is beginning to wind down spring practice. And Rodney, a final scrimmage was held on Saturday. What'd you think about that? Well, we don't get to see a whole lot of it, but from what we know, I, I think it's kind of what we expected. The defense was is a dominant defense and the offense is still a work in progress. Yep, they went about two hours inside Bryant Denny Stadium. No significant injuries, which is always a good thing. And Nick Saban talked about what needs to happen to make this team really gel as they head into Saturday's A Day game. We're certainly not satisfied with where we are uh, and certain parts of our team, but I think the biggest part uh, is that everybody's got to buy in to the attention to detail and the mental intensity that it takes to execute and do their job on a more consistent basis because everything happens relative to how we execute it. Uh, and I think that's something that uh, more guys have to buy into and we have to get done because uh, to have a good team, that, that's what you have to have. And Rodney, you get to see a lot of practice or a little, you know, get to go to practice, you get to see a few minutes of it, but what have you seen out there? Well, I mean, you know, when you look at it, I think it's kind of what we expected, what we previewed before spring practice started. Alabama's got a lot of personnel on defense up front defensively. I think they're stacked probably as anybody in the country, you know, up front. I think when you look at Reggie Ragland, he's one of the best linebackers in the country. Reuben Foster really starting to come around at that spot too. Sean Dion Hamilton, the local kid. Keith Holcomb also going to be a guy that will contribute. I think the secondary is, a, you know, a work in progress, but really coming along. And But you look at the offense, there's a lot of questions, but we talked about that. We talked about how they have a lot of people to replace, a new quarterback, three offensive linemen, whole, whole new core of wide receivers. So, again, I think it's going to take some time, but uh, they can get there. And there's always someone who wants to step up. So That's right. They'll be okay. Still more to come on Tighter Insider TV, including a departing Alabama basketball player despite the arrival of Coach Johnson. And I was able to go one-on-one -on -one with the new head coach, hear from him on his relationship with the football program, and much more. And coming up, we're welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information on the screen. Interact with Tighter Insider TV right now. Go ahead, give us a call, send us an email, or contact us on social media. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tighter Insider TV returns after the break. It wasn't all positive news for Alabama basketball. Point guard Ricky Tarrant has been granted his release by the university. He'll transfer for the second time. Tarrant, a Pleasant Grove native, came to Alabama from Tulane. And breaking news this afternoon, freshman Devin Mitchell will also transfer. He played in 14 games this season. It was a media whirlwind for the new Tide coach Avery Johnson, and that included one-on-ones with us. I was able to grab coach and get his thoughts on being the new leader of Tide basketball. It's official, Avery Johnson is the new head coach at Alabama men's basketball. Avery, an introduced today, what were your initial impressions and why did you want to come to Alabama? Jen, my initial um, impressions were that I'm really wanted here. And uh, we, we have a lot of folks that are just thirsty for uh, something incredible and unbelievable to happen with men's basketball. I could feel the energy uh, ever since I stepped foot on campus. And I'm just glad the Board of Trustees, Coach Battle, you know, and all of the fans have so much uh, confidence in the, my ability to do the job here. So I'm just thrilled, excited. My family's excited. I can't wait to uh, get on the recruiting trail. And you've had success at the NBA level, so yeah. everyone's been talking no college coaching experience. But I co talked with your college coach, Ben <laughs> Job, a little bit ago, <laughs> and he said that the college game is what you're made for. Do you agree with that? Yeah, no, I think the, the transition from college to pro is harder. We've had a lot of coaches that have been very unsuccessful when they tried to come up to the pro ranks. So I think coaching is coaching, uh, but I, I believe because I've had a son you know, play on the college circuit, play on the AAU circuit, I've had a chance to see the different nuances of the game on each level, and I think because I'm kind of an unknown, mm -hmm. maybe that'll hopefully give us a somewhat of an advantage in, in the way we want to play. But um, I have a wealth of experience uh, in basketball, and I think that's all that matters. We well, kind of let into a little bit. Your son's at Texas A&M, AJ <laughs> Jr. Yeah. So what is that going to be like? Uh, he's, he's been blowing my phone up. He's, he's dad, you know, he's trying to give me tips on what to do and 
And um, but he's great because obviously he's at one of our rival uh, universities in the SEC. But at the same time, he's still my son. So he's he's pumped up about it. My daughter's excited. Uh, it's going to be pretty eerie the first time we play uh, the Aggies when I have to coach against my son. So I got to ask, there's no chance of trying to bring him out here? No, that's not up for discussion right now, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. No, that's okay. And you know what? You're the first person to ask me that, and that's a legitimate question because we got it a hundred times when I signed on. So that's that's not up for discussion right now. He settled, and uh, but we, you never know what the future may hold. A couple weeks ago, I was speaking to an Alabama swimmer, and the Alabama swimming team has gotten a lot better. And he mentioned that no program here wants to be the worst program on campus. The expectations across Alabama athletics is ginormous. Are you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been in situations where the expectations have been ginormous. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we have a chance, again, to do something special. The administration, the donors, uh, the alumni, Everybody's behind us, and I could feel it. I met a lot of folks in our reception prior to the press conference, and again, they're salivating for something big. Uh, so well, let's, um, we're going to make sure that we, we, we get it going and get it done, and hopefully it won't take very long. And lastly, in recent years, Alabama has become a football school, is what they say. And mm -hmm. some of the pressure with hiring with uh, coaches, the talk was that people wouldn't want to be in the shadow of Nick Saban. Well, you've got to talk to Nick Saban. And what was that like for you? And what is it like to take over Alabama basketball? You know, I, I don't think it's so much about being in the shadow of Coach Saban because I have my own career mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of my own brand. And I've had a tr tremendous amount of success in my own way. But Coach Saban has embraced my arrival here. We had a chance to meet, and he's he wants basketball to get to an elite level. You know, he doesn't want he doesn't want to continue to get the question about what's wrong with Alabama basketball. He wants us to be partners to not only make obviously the rest of the sports uh, better, but he wants basketball to get there. He's going to support us. He's going to support me. We're going to spend some time together picking each other's brain. We know we both are understandably busy, but uh, he's going to be a great resource. And um, and I think I'm not only going to be, I, I don't want to be in the shadow. I want to be a partner with coach and walk side by side with him. And I don't know if you're aware, this fan base is very excited because your Twitter followers have gone up over 20,000, I believe. Have really? you seen that? I haven't that? checked it. My Twitter follows over 20,000? Yes, you are just climbing I at, quickly. I was at 10,000 I a think week you ago. Uh, tweeted out hashtag Roll Tide and it just exploded. Oh, wow. Well, again, Roll Tide Roll. And my son said hashtag RTR. RTR, correct. Yeah. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the lingo down. Well, Coach Avery, Thank obviously you. this is exactly the charisma and smile that people have been waiting for in Alabama basketball. It's a new era is about to begin. Rodney, you think it's a new era? Oh, absolutely. I think it's uh, one that's going to be very energetic, enthusiastic, and a lot of passion. Take on his personality. Well, good stuff. More coming up on TITV, including a look at Bama baseball as they continue SEC play. And next, we're welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information on the screen. Interact with Titer Insider TV right now. Go ahead and give us a call, send us an email, or contact us on social media. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV returns after the break. It was a positive week for the Alabama Crimson Tide baseball team. They went 3-1, and one, including a series victory over the Georgia Bulldogs. They won an extra innings game Friday night and followed it up with a series clinching victory on Sunday afternoon. Bama improves to 18 and 16 overall and 6 and 9 in the SEC. They'll take on UAB at the Met tonight before hitting the road in SEC play against a top 20 team in the Missouri Tigers. And now we are going to head to the phone lines and so we are going to start right away. We've got Jason from Brilliant. Jason, are you with us? Yeah, hey Rod and hey. I just want to know about all the injuries and stuff the football team has uh, been having and uh, the guys got in trouble and getting kicked off the team. How, how bad is that going to hurt the football team this fall? 
Well, I think anytime you lose great players, Jason, it certainly hurts, and they, they have. But, uh, you know, you look at a guy like Bo Scarborough, he was injured, and I think there's a good chance he could be back with that knee injury, that surgery that he had. It wouldn't surprise me if he's back by, you know, maybe fairly early in the season. Cameron Sims is the only guy that, you know, really off the top of my head that's going to be lost for the season. I think, you know, as far as suspensions and guys have left the program, you know, Tyron Jones, I thought he had a lot of potential. It's really a sad story because he had a chance to really be an outstanding player here at Alabama. And there was, you know, with the running back situation the way it is, it was an opportunity for him to, to really contribute. I think Jonathan Taylor could have been a dominant defensive lineman, but unfortunately it didn't work out. So, I mean, but sometimes, Jason, that's the way it goes. You hit a little streak where you lose some players, and that's what it's all about in recruiting. You have guys that are ready to step up. All right, thank you, Jason. And now we've got Howard from Tuscaloosa. Howard, are you with us? I am with you. Hello, welcome to Tighter Insider. Thank you. I want to let you all know I enjoy your introduction on weekend uh, when you all be introduced to come in. But but let me get to the bro what you asked about, what I need to tell you. I, I really appreciate uh, you uh, Alabama hiring uh, Avery Johnson because he's the kind of guy who can go out and get the people. I remember when we had Charles Cleveland and Farmer and Gardner and all those guys uh, and the Oldham boys from Birmingham. We had all kind of mixture of of of, of chemistry together, and I know he's going to get that kind of stuff. And I'm just pleading, Alabama, get ready to roll. And I'm going to tell you, roll, tight, roll. <laughs> Howard's pretty fired up about Coach Johnson already. I agree with you, Howard. I think, you know, he's a, uh, Coach Johnson's a guy that relates well to everyone. He relates well to uh, uh, young kids, certainly, and I think that's going to be obviously the key on the recruiting trail is, is how well he relates to players and the things that he can do to help them develop. And I think another thing, too, is I think if you're a parent, and he comes into your living room, how you cannot be sold on your son going to play for Avery Johnson. I mean, it uh, certainly would be something that you would feel very comfortable putting his future or your son's future into his hands for the next four or five years. So I think it's, uh, I agree with you, Howard, it's an outstanding hire. Sounds a lot like some of the other coaches around here as well. I've heard the same thing. If that coach comes into their living room, there's sold. a lot of good coaches here. Well, we've got one more caller for right now, CB from Tuscaloosa. CB, welcome to Tighter Insider. Hey, how y'all tonight? Good, how are you? They're doing wonderful. I, I don't want to be negative or anything because we all like the coach. He's a good man. And uh, appreciate you putting the record up in baseball. It's, uh, we're 6 and 9 in the SEC this year. And since Coach Gaspar has been here, we've won 73 and lost like 90, right around that figure. And, and I, uh, I hope it's a big turnaround, but I, it, it's going to have to be if we're going to feel it, put some people in that seats at that new stadium. Thank you. Well. All right, so I think he's kind of asking about the coach if there'd be a coaching change and I know the team is young and they are playing at the Hoover Met which means I had one of the guys tell me they don't just get to go out to the ball field in between classes like they're used to doing and they're traveling every single week and I mean their entire season is basically on the road and that's yeah. got to affect them. It's a very difficult situation they're having to play away from home certainly and it's you don't get that home atmosphere really it's not that the Hoover Met it's a great facility don't get me wrong but at the same time it's not like being at home mm -hmm. you know you don't get that same kind of atmosphere that's not making an excuse but I think that uh, you know next year we'll certainly have a good opportunity to see Coach Gaspard. I think he, again, I've always said this, I think he's a good recruiter. I think he's a great evaluator of talent. And, um, you know, hopefully next year they'll make it happen. Yeah, and they'll get the students back as fans, that's which right. they're missing that right now, and that's pretty tough to deal with too. Well, coming up next, we'll check in on the Alabama softball team as they head from a week off from SEC play. What's next for them? And coming up, more of your phone calls week for Alabama's softball team. They only played two games, midweek wins against UAB and Middle Tennessee, followed by a weekend off from SEC play. Here's a snapshot of the season so far for the fifth ranked Tide. They're 31 and 9, 10 and 5 in SEC play. They'll play two more midweek games beginning tonight against UAB. Then they'll host NC State before hitting the road against Auburn this weekend. Well, let's go back to the phone line. Starting out, we've got David from Northport. David, welcome to Tighter Insider. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, look, I just want to make a couple of comments. Uh, I'm 59 years old. Uh, I've waited for some talk of Final Four at Alabama for a long time. I, I lived here through CM Newton, great, uh, great coach, Coach Sanderson, Wimp Sanderson. But I've never heard much talk about uh, about going to the Final Four, and uh, 
you know, I've said for a long time, if I can if I can see Alabama basketball in the Final Four just one time before I die, <laughs> you know, that, that that that'll be uh, that'll be great. So I, I hope this talk can continue. And yes, I, I certainly uh, hope that Coach Saban will, uh, you know, stand true because there's no way, uh, there's no reason why football and basketball and all the other sports cannot coexist at the University of Alabama. Thanks a lot. Well, I would agree, and I think Coach Saban has long believed that. I think that's certainly been something that he's believed, that if it says Alabama across the front, it helps his program if they're successful. So, I mean, I think it's a team team effort here. I, I certainly believe that because anytime Alabama receives positive publicity, it's a positive for every single program. And we saw that at the press conference with the other coaches being present, as well mm -hmm. as Saban has gone to speak to the gymnastics team. So they obviously are all working together. So you know, and, and Alabama has had some really good basketball teams. He talked about Sam Newton, the 1975-76 team that, that, that lost to Indiana, that was the last perfect team that went 31-0. You know, mm -hmm. that was a great Alabama team. And that was a team that was probably Final Four worthy, but they just happened to run into the best team in the country. So there's been some really good basketball teams. Obviously, Wimp Sanderson had some tremendous teams as well. So so it can be done here. All right. Well, we've got William from Saginaw. William, welcome to Tighter Insider. Hey, guys. Yes, I've got a question for Rodney. Uh, it's uh, about Damian Harris and the possibility of him working into the rotation in the fall. I, I think it's certainly a possibility, uh, William, when you look at their situation now with Tyron Jones gone, and we really don't know what Bo Scarborough's situation is going to be, though I think he's going to, you know, he'll get back. But I think, you know, Damian Harris has a great opportunity. You're talking about Derrick Henry. You're talking about, uh, you know, Kenyon Drake coming back. So, you know, there's some room for some guys to make a contribution. I think the freshman out of Kentucky has a tremendous opportunity when he gets here. Hopefully he's ready. And we're wrapping up the show. When we come back, we'll talk about Bama Gymnastics as they ready for the NCAA championships. We're live on a beautiful night in Tuscaloosa. Tighter Insider TV is back after the break. And Alabama Gymnastics going for their seventh national title this weekend. Thanks for so much for watching. Here you go. This is Nick Saban, Deontay Wilder, and IndyCar driver Ryan Hunter Ray teamed up to help promote the Hyundai Grand Prix of Alabama. Deontay will be the Grand Marshal of the event, which takes place on April 26th at the Barber Motorsports Park in Leeds. That's all we've got for you tonight. Thanks for watching Tighter Insider. For Rodney Orr, I'm Jen Chapman. Have a good night.